is Matthew Ho. Uh, I served in the Iraq War in a variety of capacities. Um, every day of my life, I was involved with the Iraq War from its inception and its run up in 2002 um, up until I went to Afghanistan in 2009. Um, every day in between those seven years, I worked on the Iraq War, whether I was in Iraq or I was in Washington, D.C. Um, I worked at a variety of levels. I saw the war uh, from all aspects, uh, from senior levels. I was uh, with the Secretary of the Navy's office, uh, directly with the Secretary of the Navy's office in Washington, D.C. I worked uh, for the Iraq Policy and Operations Group. Uh, so the reports I wrote on Iraq went directly to the Secretary of State, uh, to the Vice President, to the President, um, as well then to being a Marine officer in Iraq, uh, having uh, that uh, had taken part in combat, uh, leading Marines, uh, being part of an occupation force, um, as well as being a, uh, for lack of a better term, colonial administrator. I was part of a State Department team and I was in charge of reconstruction. I was in charge of politics for four uh, uh, provinces in North Central Iraq. So I One of my uh, positions in Iraq, uh, the first time I was in Iraq in 2004, 2005, I was in Tikrit and I was part of a State Department team and I was responsible for the reconstruction work uh, in four provinces. And I was a 31 year old man at that point with not a lot of experience, particularly to have that degree of responsibility. But no one else ever showed up. They never staffed those government positions. They never, uh, when I say they, the United States government never provided the proper oversight to take care of that massive $16 billion reconstruction uh, program. Um, I myself uh, was responsible for a number of programs, um, and many of those programs were done in cash. Uh, one, one program of mine that was done in cash, and when I mean cash, it was uh, vacuum sealed $100 bills straight from the Federal Reserve, uh, was $50 million. Uh, the most I ever had in my possession at one time was $26 million in cash that I kept in my bedroom in two safes. I had an AK-47 and a small 32 caliber pistol I could put in my suit pocket. And uh, that was what I did. I, paid for these construction projects. We tried to utilize these construction projects uh, in a manner that was gonna help us win hearts and minds. This is the whole counterinsurgency uh, uh, principle. Um, the notion that General Petraeus came up with counterinsurgency the years uh, later in the war it was just a, a public relations stunt. Um, we were doing that type of work in, a, in Iraq uh, well before General Petraeus uh, became the darling. Uh, of uh, the media and uh, the American Congress. But what witnessed though was just a vast giveaway, just a vast uh, 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 racket, the, 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 the uh, legalized corruption that was available to American corporations in Iraq was just tremendous. Uh, the amount of money that they were able to collect, the billions and billions of dollars that were supposed to be utilized to make the lives of the Iraqi people better, that just stayed in the United States. Uh, you know, uh, uh, runs uh, into the double digit billions. Uh, so you just had this um, this frenzied uh, uh, circumstance where there was almost no government oversight. Uh, corporations were allowed to do what they wanted to in Iraq. Of course, you had the excesses with the private security and everything too, but just the amount of money um, that was uh, 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 stolen from the Iraqi people, whether it was their money originally uh, because of money that had been seized by uh, the United Nations and, and uh, or whether it was a money appropriated by the U.S. Congress, the vast, vast majority of that just ended up in the pockets of American corporations. So um, you have uh, this program that, again, runs $16 billion dollars that the Special Inspector General for Iraq Reconstruction, uh, the United Nations, um, other uh, independent audits have found there's really no evidence of any successful work being done. But you have in the United States uh, thousands and thousands of people who now own second homes, who now drive BMWs, right, who, who have um, benefited from this mass expenditure of money. 
And the, the, the sickening thing about this, what makes it so grotesque is, of course, underlying all that are the million dead Iraqis. So it really was. Um, I mean, uh, the, 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 this was a corporate giveaway. This was a, a racket um, unknown, I think, in, in the history of warfare in the way it became bonanza for private business. Um, and again, this is all on top of the one million dead Iraqis, uh, the millions and millions of Iraqis who were forced from their homes, um, and the endless suffering that still goes on uh, today. Um, and so it's appropriate for this tribunal to call for uh, investigations, to call for uh, audits, uh, and to call for criminal penalties uh, against these men and women who orchestrated uh, this racket. Um, so again, I want to thank uh, this People's Tribunal for this opportunity to speak about these issues.